Hello. I'm on here a little early and we'll start in about 13 minutes. Um, so if you are watching this recording, you might just want to forward to the um, six third, well, I guess it would be 13 minute mark because um, we will start around then. But until then, I'm just prepping and I will mute myself. And when people pop on, I can make sure they've got everything they need. You will need, oh, well, I'll, I'll do this at 7, 6.30. <laughs> I'll go over it.
Hi, I see we have a few people coming on. So awesome. Welcome, welcome. Is that you, Kathy? Oh, I see Andrea now. Sorry. Before it was hey. me. <laughs> Wasn't showing you me earlier. All right. Um, so we still have a few more minutes and I was just having fun here. I kind of got on early and then it wasn't going to let me pop out gone with the recording. So I had to just stay on, <laughs> but we'll get started here in a little bit. I see Pat is on and Kathy. Can you hear me? I can. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I've been so, playing with roses. Can you see them? Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, I'll have to show you the birthday card my mom made me back after she took my class. I, oh, I cool. leave it in my little workstation. Isn't that cute? She goes, I work for 45 minutes on this. I was like, you're too sweet. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I know. But yeah, roses are so fun. <laughs> We're going to do, um, I think I'm going to attempt a point set, which actually I'm practicing it right now to figure out how to teach it. But um, yeah, so that's really awesome. I'm glad that you're, you're getting to practice. I like roses just for the sake of the, the, all the different kind of ways they can look. So, but um, we'll get what, four more minutes here. So hopefully that'll be good. <laughs> Pat, can you hear me? She might have just pulled it up, but not quite on yet, so. I'm here, but I don't think you can see me. Nope. You can, if you want us to see you, you can turn the video on. Can you see me okay? I can see you fine, yes. Okay, good. Hey, um, Miss Pat, I miss you. Hi. <laughs> it's a good way to see one another. <laughs> It, it is. is. And I think I put some in the last e blast. I have some August classes coming up too. So wave, Mama. Wave it, everybody. Hi. Wave it at you. Hello, Kathy's mom. <laughs> Kathy, I'm not sure I know her name. Bernice. <laughs> Bernice. I didn't know her name. I knew her name. <laughs> Hello, Miss Bernice. Hi, Amy. Hello. Is someone else on? Oh, Mimi. Ah, I see. Hello, Mimi. Welcome. Well, the whole family's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are going to get started in a few more minutes. I just, um, we had about seven register. Hey, Mark. So Oh, is, hi, Michael. How are you? Yeah, man, I just got off a banker call. It, I barely had time to grab some paper <laughs> and stuff, but I'm glad to be here. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, good. I'm glad you can make it. I'm trying to see <laughs> if we have anyone else joining. We still have about two more minutes before we get okay. started. Get the paint ready. Is it hot Perfect. down your way, Michael? It's really hot, but I'm still outside because... I'm, I'm, so turn it on. I'm so sick of teleworking in my house. I'll even sit outside just to uh, get a break. Good for you. Oh. All right. Before we get started here, because we are going to have a little bigger group than last week for um, those of you that were with us last week. I do ask that once I start talking, if you don't mind muting yourselves, um, which I think a lot of you have already done that, just so um, if there's any background noise or your dog starts barking, people can still hear me. Um, I can't guarantee my boys won't come crashing in here, although I think they left to go to their grandparents with my dad, my husband, not my dad. But um, where was I going with this? If you have a question, you can unmute yourself at any point and ask it. Um, question, it's whenever you want, you don't have, you know, um, that's fine with me. And if you need me to slow down or anything like that, just holler. If you need me to go over something again, I'm happy to do it. I have got tons of paper. I can kind of stop and 
and go over things. But today we're going to be kind of doing, we're going to be kind of breaking down some different um, pieces of, I guess, learning techniques through painting actual specific like uh, um, parts that we can then kind of pick and choose and make your own wreath. You, it's not going to be a really a step by step when it comes to making your wreath. You'll be able to kind of pick the elements you like and repeat them and arrange them how you want, make them bigger, make them smaller. Um, so everyone should, would ha will have a unique product when we're all done. Um, but our practice sheet will be kind of where we're learning how to do those things. And the great thing about that is um, while we're making a wreath, you can also turn them into postcards or cards or um, some of the things you, it won't even be really crisp. You can use them for any um, type of wreath. Um, we're kind of doing a Christmas in July theme. So that's why um, it's going to be a little bit holly jolly here. Um, but um, again, it's, it's pretty easy just to adjust the color palette and um, make it non-Christmas. So I'm excited about this. This is a really relaxing, um, fun um, thing to do, I think, especially in quarantine. Like sometimes if I just have five minutes or I'm on a Zoom call for work or something, I have my watercolors right here, I can just pull them out and, um, and kind of doodle while I'm listening. <laughs> so it's nice. Um, all right. So we're going to get started. Um, what we need is you need watercolors. I, I, I'm not sure which palette I was going to use today, but I kind of did some practice. So I'm going to stick with my little praying palette. I have a bigger palette, um, that I can use. This is actually the one, sorry. My fingers. Oops. Hey everyone. <laughs> so it happens when you're trying to do things. On. So this is like um, a palette I could use. But I think I'll be able to get all the colors I need with this little praying one. Um, so if you you use whatever you have, you also need a piece of paper. Any size um, will do. I've kind of labeled out so I don't forget what I want to teach you all here. And this is going to be where we practice our techniques. And then you'll need a square watercolor paper of some sort. If it's not square, don't worry. You can always chop it down later, or you can just make it work for you. Um, it's whatever you have. I did a fairly big one so I can paint big so y'all can see better is my hope. And I just realized I need to turn my light. And then you'll need paper towels and water. Um, I actually have a bowl so I can trace my a circle later and I don't have to freehand it. So if you have like a kitchen bowl or a cup you wanna trace depending on the size paper. Um, but we'll get started. I'm Amy Jackson, by the way, in case you're new here and um, haven't joined us before, but I think everyone has. I see um, some familiar faces and some new ones, but um, I'll get started. And this is recording, so if you need to go back and watch it, I'll be sending it, it out in an email to everyone. Um, and there you go. So let me flip it around. And again, this always takes me a few minutes to kind of get set up so I have the right angle. And... Let's see here. I'm trying to, my clip is in a funky position today. I think my boys were playing with it. <laughs> All right. So, and again, ah, I hate this sometimes. Hello. <laughs> oh, well, I've had it set up before and now I must have bumped it. Sorry, give me a second. I don't know what's going on. All right, try it one more time here. I have the biggest iPhone you can get, I think, and it's just sometimes the stand is not quite strong enough to get, get it. All right. All right, so um, you're welcome to label it or you can just kind of paint along and we'll go. Um, I like to kind of have it laid out because sometimes what we'll do is we'll paint a little bit, let it dry, go paint something else, and then um, come back to it. So that's the name of the game today. My goodness, I can't have some loosey goosey hands today. All right, so I'm gonna kind of put this here so y'all can see how I'm mixing things. So I'm gonna use kind of a medium and small paintbrush today. Nothing major, if you use what you have. Um, 
All right, for watercolor, we always want to make, you don't use directly out of the wells, you always kind of pull water and make a puddle into your own well. So I'm going to get a good amount of water and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green just to kind of start with. You can add more yellow and more green just depending on what you want. You can always add to it later. But you really want a transparent wash. Um, and we're gonna start with a very basic leaf. And I'm just using the tip of my paintbrush and I'm just going kind of in a curve. And then I almost do a straight line on the other side. Okay, so it kind of has a tip and a curve and it's okay if there's a little puddle in there. Can you guys see that well enough or do I need to zoom closer? Okay. And then I'm going to leave like a little gap of paper showing. I'm gonna to kind of touch the tip and I'm gonna bring it right down. So it's gonna have a nice little gap and you can close it back up or you can leave it open. I'm gonna close this one up. And so it just kind of creates this, um, and I'm gonna zoom in for you real quick, little space of paper showing through. Okay, if you wanna practice another one in that same little area, you can practice a little one going the other way. The key is kind of getting a straight edge on the in, inside and then you can connect it. You can really make these as pointy as you want. And you can connect them or to leave a gap. I'm gonna demonstrate it just one more time up here. You can, leave it. And if you get too much water, just dry your paintbrush off and you can kind of pull some off and dry your paintbrush off. I'll get my little paper towel here a little bit closer. And then again, I can go down the other side this got pretty light because I did pull a lot of that water off just for fun. Okay. And so you can do those leaves with any colors. You can do them with, you know, yellow or add blue to the green. Um, that kind of makes a pretty, if I were to add blue to my green there. I'm just going to do one more. Usually I like to have things in odd numbers, just, yeah, that almost looks like a coffee bean. <laughs> so I can make it a little pointier. So you can kind of start to see by having one element repeat different sizes, you can build it up um, to lots of different things. All right. So that's leaf one. <laughs> um, the next leaf is going to be, I thought it was going to be a holly leaf, but no, that's not right. Um, it's just going to be more of a, a pure solid leaf and maybe we can add some more to it later. Um, so to start with, we'll make it a little pointier and sometimes you have to get a smaller paintbrush but I kind of went straight down and then I ballooned it out. And I'm almost starting below that point just so it stays kind of sharp and balloon it out the other way. And I'm gonna just fill it in. Okay, and then if I have extra water colors and I might make it even sharper. Okay. And then I might get a little more blue to add to that, to the add to the green. And again, I'm kind of mixing my colors, not in the wells, but actually in a, you can do a glass plate if you don't have a good palette here um, or something. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue while it's still wet, kind of towards the bottom. 
you can just fan it out again it's very very transparent it's kind of another layer wash and i'm just gonna let that be green at the top and again if you want to practice another one maybe go in the other direction you can the good thing about this is you can always start small with your drawing and make it bigger as you go so i'm almost starting with a little circle and it's kind of like a little raindrop teardrop leaf once that dries a little bit, I'll come back and add a little detail. You you don't want it too bold or bright, but it'll it'll be nice. Okay, so got two leaves. How are we doing? Am I going too fast? Anyone want to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the speed? Okay, awesome. Thank you. I All wish right. I could see it better, Amy. Okay, so do I need to go a little closer? I'd like that because I can't see your strokes. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's I, better. That's what I need. Thank you for telling me that. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to do berries. So I'm going to make sure my paintbrush is nice and clean, and I can do that by swishing it in the water and testing it on the paper towel, make sure my water's clear. And then I'm going to get a really um, good wash of red and i might have to pull that down here a nice little wash of red and we're going to do pre pretty simple berries to start with you can if um you have some experience i, I know i taught these last week if you want to if you kind of want to go with that but really i'm just going to kind of paint a little circle and then i'm going to block out a little white area and then fill it in so it's just got a little highlight um and then i'm going to practice kind of doing some different size berries this way add in that little highlight and if you want if you have a smaller paintbrush and want to go smaller you can if you want to make your paint thicker you can if you have multiple reds that you want to kind of mix together or even add orange into it you can but i'm just kind of playing around because it's berries are um, an easy way to add a little pop of color to the greenery in the leaves you can even kind of do one that might have green later you can do this <clears throat> I might even use a little bit of pure red to darken the opposite side of the highlight just to give it a little depth. This is pretty, you know, we're kind of keeping it basic right here, but it never hurts to have a little dimension in things. You know, we can add in branches and stuff later once we kind of learn how to do that. But pretty much it's just a circle with a little white paper showing through. And you, while you're doing this, you know, you can really experiment, uh, experiment with getting super, oops, sorry, I'm bumping the camera now, um, super light with this, you know, by using a lot of water. Sorry, my paper's just bumping the camera. Um, So you can see the different, that's just, the, that's the same color as this, just with a lot more water. So sometimes I like to see how light I can go with still seeing, seeing the object. Because <laughs> that's the trick in watercolor is being able to get really light and then building it up.
Y'all doing good with the berries? Amy, you were talking yes. about getting your paintbrush clean from changing from paints. Yeah. What about it? When you were talking about changing yeah. colors, going from a light to a dark or a dark to a light. I was yes. in trouble with that after your first class. And I okay. watched the YouTube video. And the oh, lady nice. said if you would do eights in your water jar, if you would do eights in the jar, that it gets all the paint out and it really does. It, so what do you put in there? You just put your paintbrush in your little water jar. Yeah. Like you're doing eights. Oh, oh, like figure eights. Oh, yeah, figure yeah. Eights. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can do some and it figure gets eights. All of your yeah. paint out. Yes. So yeah. I was having trouble with that. Oh, good. No, thank you for sharing that. That's very helpful. Yeah. I mean, that is, um, I think, a key, especially when you're going from like a green to a red. Um, because those are complementary colors, which will make brown if you don't get your brush cleaned all the way. <laughs> so it is important to, um, you know, if if you're, sometimes I use that to my advantage and I like a little bit of overlap. Um, and so I don't clean my brush out. But no, that is, that is a good thing is to kind of um, make sure your brush is real clean. And you just, you know, if you have a scrap piece of paper to test it first or something like that, that always helps too. Okay. Um, so now we're just going to move on and we're going to do, um, two different kinds of pine um, in this little area. So we're gonna start off with a simple one and you can do green, any, any combination of green you want. If you want it to be a blue green or um, more of a yellow green, I'm gonna have some green add in some blue to it. A little more blue. And I'm just gonna have a nice puddle to go with. Sometimes you can even add like a touch of another color, like red or purple, just to kind of kill the brightness of it, especially with these praying colors. <laughs> they can be a little overwhelming sometimes. So I just, I put a touch of purple and a touch of red, nothing much to kind of, um, oh, you guys can't see my, my little puddle here. Um, but once I'm kind of happy with the color, you can just use pure green, that's fine. I'm going to, um, draw a very thin line and you can see I'm holding my my paintbrush like a pencil and I'm just kind of pulling the color down I'm going to try to make it a little curved just for that for an organic feel on this one and then um, you can either go actually I recommend going from the branch out so you can kind of lift your paintbrush as you go out and it's going to create um, kind of a thickness that thins out. It doesn't have to go all the same direction. You can even go, the trick is going the other way. <laughs> it's always hard. It's kind of harder to go, but you can, depending on what hand you are, like I might have to go this opposite way and then make it a little thicker. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. So what I'm kind of doing on the other side is I'm making a thin line and then thickening it in the bottom. Mine's kind of going all different directions. I am having a little, because <laughs> now it's really close, I have to kind of wrench my head around the um, camera, but that's okay. I don't mind. Um, so this is kind of just a simple um, pine. Actually, I might teach you guys how to do three different ones. So that one's kind of the, the branches are going out. And you can do as, I mean, you could overlap them. I kind of like the thinness of that one. The next one we're, we're gonna do is a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make it kind of come up this way. And you can use the same color or experiment if you're, you might do a little more of a yellow green on this one. And instead of going out, I'm going to kind of pull them in. But again, you know, you want it to be the individually pine needles to kind of be more thick on the inner side of it. So these are going to be more coming in and it's going to create two really different looks. 
maybe they'll be a little closer together. Um, they can be different sizes. They can overlap. So you can kind of really see two different styles of pine needles. And, like, and actually I might just save that other one for to technique down below. So I'm letting these overlap a little more. And always go back and add. And with both of these styles, you can um, get another color and kind of go over it a second time to thicken it up, or you can leave it um, just how it is. So when you're building up your wreaths or your cards or whatever you're painting, you can you can kind of um, leverage what you you know how to make. You know, if you only know how to make these techniques, like you can make, you actually build upon them and make them look a lot different, even though they're really the same thing, just overlap. <laughs> so it's a neat little trick. All right. How's the pine needles coming? Good. Awesome. And I'm going to just, while y'all are kind of working, I'm going to, I think I'm going to add the yellow to this one just for fun, just so y'all can see how that looks. You don't have to. Just going to show you what I was talking about when you overlap with colors. Kind of see that just gives it a little more. Sometimes if it's still wet, it'll make, you know, multiple colors. And actually, I think I am going to do the third one right here. I'd like to add that in there. All right, so this third one, need a little more paint in my palette. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of a yellow green, a little more yellow. Actually, I might make it just more green in general. And I'm going to go more of a straight line. So we kind of have two organic ones. I mean, you could do this curved, but our branches, this is going to be a little more abstract. Our branches, your paintbrush is going to go perpendicular to your first line. So I'm going to kind of start off small and it doesn't have to touch, but I'm kind of like dotted lining the um, strokes there. So the needles are, it's more of a painterly way of doing things rather than trying to draw individual pine needles. So I might, you know, you kind of work your way down it and you can add some extra strokes if you need to. It's almost like a zigzag, but it's, you can see these curve out, these curve in, and these are kind of just straight. You can get as thick or as thin as you want. So you have three very different ways of drawing pine needles. Amy, everybody might know this, but I hadn't thought of it. I can see your paper a lot better when I put you on speaker view. Oh, okay, yes. If you're new to Zoom, um, and it depends on if you're on your phone or a computer, um, you can kind of choose the way you view. There's a gallery view where you can see kind of everyone. There's a speaker view um, that I think if you kind of select you'll just see mine um and then i think there's also another option but i don't even i can't even remember what that might be but i i can see yours up close and i can see everybody else's square small okay yeah so that's speak can y'all see me okay yeah and i kind of have yeah i have mine on gallery view so i can see read when you guys are about done <laughs> all right you guys ready to move on to holly yes awesome okay so um now you're always welcome to draw this first um and i think i am just going to um 
just to kind of give you guys a little more of the shape. So um, this is what I'll do with my paintbrush too. But pretty much I start with a tent like shape up at the top and then it kind of curves in both ways. And then it curves in again until it touches. And you can do that more than just the two times I did on either side. Um, and then usually I just draw three little berries down at the bottom and then I can have another one coming out or you can do as many as you want. So I'm gonna do it again over here, maybe make a bigger leaf. And it doesn't have to be perfect. But the key is you kind of have uh, mirror imaged side smileys <laughs> or parentheses that are turned the opposite way, um, if that helps. And then you can have a little line coming in if you want. So then to paint, you know, you kind of want to pick your brush size based on how big you're drawing things. So I'm going to have to go with a smaller brush because I did paint these small. And I'm going to, my first layer of this is going to be a very light yellow green. So lots of water, a lot of yellow, touch of green. And this, this is going to be one we're going to come back to after we layer. And so I'm going to paint a nice little layer. of green in here. And I'm going to let that dry. And actually, well, let's try and I think I'm going to come up here and get a little more of a blue green work in. And this is a good time to have like a little piece of scrap paper to test kind of next to the color to make sure. And I'm gonna have to add a little red violet in there, I think, to make it different from what I have. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that's a little darker. I know the camera's having a hard time focusing. And so I'm gonna just kind of draw, hint in some little veins in here. And again, these are practice. So just kind of a simple line. And it's almost like drawing the pine needles in to your leaves. <laughs> and this is a good, you know, it doesn't have to be actually touch anything can kind of see here, I didn't really touch it, but it's just kind of a hint of texture. Just add another little layer into your items. I'm always amazed at how these little simple eight color palettes, you can mix so many different colors from that. It's a really kind of pretty blue. You know, you can always add in a little more detail on the bottom. And part of this is just barely touching your paper with your, the, like a hair of your paintbrush, just to get that thin line. Um, a lot of, a lot of watercolors, just being able to control um, how hard you're pressing and try not to get too heavy handed. Um, and then, I think now this is dry. Normally I don't touch things, but my light is so bright. Sometimes, sometimes it looks shiny when it's not. Um, are y'all ready to kind of go back to the holly? Or am I moving too fast?
I'm ready for the berries. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So I, since I had just mixed up kind of that blue green with a little bit of red and violet in there, I like that color. So I'm going to kind of go around the edges here of my holly with that just really kind of thin mainly because I drew mine in pencil I can water it down a little bit or not but it's just going to kind of make it two-toned if you wanted to you could go back and mix that in with some of your original color Maybe paint half of your leaf with a little darker green. This kind of makes makes it a little more visually interesting. And then your little red berries, we've already done red berries, so you just do the same thing on your holly and you can decide how dark or light you want them and it's not a big deal if you accidentally paint your whole holly red your holly berry red that's okay sometimes i do that and it still reads as if you have some with highlights it'll still read as holly berry and i'm way out of the lines on my drawing here so i'm going to add a little bit of darker red just to kind of cover that up I could always go back and erase, but I probably want all my practice sheets. <laughs> so the fun thing about these practice sheets when you're all done, if you're happy with something and you don't want to waste it, you can cut it out and use it as an element on a card. Um, so that's what I usually do with my little practice sheets <laughs> if I really like something. And if you don't like it, then you just toss it. Amy? Yes. This is my first time doing watercolor, although I may have done it when I was a teeny tiny child. Um, what I found working on this holly leaf where I'm trying to do accenting is yes. that the instant I touch my brush somewhere, it's as if all the paint gets sucked into um, what I was working on. So I couldn't do the outlining. It just got absorbed into the leaf of the holly. What do okay, I mean? Okay, that means you just, yours hadn't dried yet. Um, so that means you, uh, you probably just had your first layer was a lot more wet than mine. Um, so okay. what, what you'll need to do is just kind of give it some more time, maybe work on some other things and go back to it. Um, the good thing is it, it'll probably dry, but yeah, like if you were to, so I'm assuming what's happening here, I can kind of demo it, it and you can tell me whether it's not like if you, you have a, a color, even if you let it dry a little bit, if it's still damp, um, and you come in with your accent color and you touch it, it'll, it'll kind of go everywhere. Right. Cause it's wet into wet. Right. Um, whereas you can see, I kind of have a crisper line because mine was totally dry. Um, you know, after I did my accent line, I did kind of want to get that wet into wet. So I quickly kind of did half of it with that accent color, which you could always wait until it totally dries. Um, when you came up here and did this part with the vein, kind of adding the veins into the leaves, were those leaves dry? Um, I didn't actually add the veins. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. So, I mean, if those are dry, you can add them, but I mean, I mean or, you know, I'm just saying like, that's why my lines are so crisp on that is because it was completely dry. Whereas okay. you can see on this, where I just kind of did the blob and it was so still so wet, it just kind of bled. Is that the problem you're having? Um, I wouldn't say problem, but that's the issue. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, and sometimes I, I mean, I, like that look sometimes I kind of did that up here on purpose right before I added the veins um so if you're wanting it if you're just wanting a sharper line you just got to let it dry if that helps and okay. not use as much water um 
in mixing your color, like have a drier paintbrush when you dip your dip into your puddle. So you you know, and maybe dry it off just a touch before you start. Um, like, you know, if I just use if I get a bunch of water on my paintbrush and start painting, it's going to be harder to control than if I dry it off a little bit here and you know I can use a, a sharper point. Excellent. Does that does that help? Yes. Okay. No, that's a very good question because sometimes I'm just so used to working with watercolor and I'm not seeing what you guys are doing. That that's a fantastic question. I'm glad you asked that. All right. So um we're moving on to branches. And um so what we'll need to do is mix up I think a little brown. And if you don't give me give me just a quick second here so I can kind of think about what I had planned here. Okay. Um, and you're going to want to use the smallest paintbrush you have. So to mix up brown, let me get my little palette here in front of you guys. Um, I'm just going to use the red I have. If your palette is getting messy, you can just kind of clean it out with a paper towel, like get some water on there and clean it out like that. Um, I'm going to get some green. And I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off before I dip it into the red. And I'm going to get some red and I'm going to see what kind of brown that makes. <laughs> if you have brown that you want to use, that's fine. This is kind of more of a neutrally gray color, which I like. So I'm going to kind of go with that. I actually have a little bit of brown. I could always add a little bit of purple or something to it to kind of. But again, I want it nice and thin um so that sorry i'm trying to find my little sample i had done okay so the branches are just going to be good they're going to add kind of like an element uh, an earthy element to your wreath if you want that um you know you don't have to have the branch you, it's a good thing to kind of learn how to do these so you can add berries um to them or however. So I'm gonna start with kind of a line that's a little bit on the thicken, and I'm gonna go this way. So again, I'm kind of thinking of a curve. I'm just gonna make it thin and I can always go back and make it thicker. But the idea is you wanna kind of get thinner as you go out and you can see I'm like pretty much using the very tip of my paintbrush to get that um, thinness. So you can see how much thicker it is compared to how thin it is there and same thing you can always even start thin and add thick i'm going to go a different direction kind of going out this way and then i can make it thicker where it's um leaving and I'm gonna add a little line over here coming out of that branch I'm going to add a little longer one. And again, I'm just kind of using, you can see that there's like a little longer hair coming out of my paintbrush than the rest. I'm trying to use that. If you don't have that, just don't fuss so hard. Um, and you can kind of add the branches going different ways. And again, you know, you, this is not um, a case where you want a whole bunch of water on your paintbrush because we're dealing with like more detail. So when you're dealing with more detail, the less water on your brush, not necessarily that's mixed in with your color, but the less water that's on your brush, the easier it is to manage. I'm really liking this brown I made with praying green and red. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed it's kind of like a gray and i'm just sort of adding some, you know as the branches get out further they're getting smaller in length and in width they don't have to necessarily touch either they can kind of So 
So again, this is kind of a nice way to add earthy tones. You could always go back with your brown and kind of streak it through some of your branches. Pine needles. You don't have to, just a thought. <laughs> you can always add, add a little, make it more of a berry, almost like a strawberry. <laughs> Added some green onto that too. That's the way I had set that one out, I think. If you wanted to play with adding berries on there, you can. Um, kind of like it just plain. So we're going to have some foliage, we're going to have some, you know, a lot of winter plants don't have any leaves, so that kind of is a nice contrast. It makes it feel winter. All right, now we're going to try a poinsettia, and I'm going to say this is probably the one that I'm most intimidated by teaching, so bear with me while we're learning how to do this. <laughs> um, I'm going to get my paintbrush nice and clean. I'm gonna make a little puddle of yellow. You can see my yellow has kind of gotten dirty. So I'm gonna tear off a little piece of paper towel and just kind of wipe it out. And then I'm gonna get a clean place on my palette again. So I have somewhere to put it. Um, I'm still using my small paintbrush, smallest I have. And I'm gonna get a little bit of water. We don't need a lot of yellow for this. We're just kind of doing the center of the flower here. Um, and so I'm going to just paint a little circle. And I know yellow is hard to see. So I'm gonna add a little bit of orange into mine, just so you guys can see it <laughs> a little better. But it's just like a little pea, a pea size, like a green pea. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly shaped. to a circle just enough to get started. I'm blowing on mine a little bit just because we're gonna wanna kind of paint our first layer of petals on there. Um, so that's why. So while that's drying, I'm gonna get a nice little layer of water and red and I want this is going to be my um lightest layer so we want it to be very translucent as clear of a red as you can get <laughs> and I didn't mix it with any other colors and since my little bud here is still a little wet um, I'm not going to go too crazy but just like how we painted some leaves I'm going to um, start with a point, kind of balloon it out, come down. And again, I'm not touching that leaf. I can add that later. I'm just going to fill that in. And these do not have to be perfectly sized. Michael, welcome back. <laughs> so we're, we're just doing a point center. We just added the center. The center. Now, so I'm going to go opposite and I'm going to go down. So I'm going to start at the balloon part and draw it out. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can always make it bigger later. Um, or not. Now I can kind of see mine's dry, so I can pull it in. And then I'm going to draw one coming out here. And these aren't touching, you can make them touch, but I'm gonna add more layers later. So I'm trying to put a little hair in there. <laughs> it's gonna drive me crazy. All right, get that out of there. Um, points that is gonna have some curves in the end, so you can always make some funkier points. 
That one went a little crazy, but that's okay. Um, and then one more, if you have room to fit. Right there. So mine are kind of different colors, which is fine. Whoop, I'm a little red there. Don't mean to do that. So this first kind of star, these four petals, I'm gonna let dry before I move on to the next layer. All right, so now I'm going to, um, I still have some kind of blue green. We're gonna move on to mistletoe while that's drying. Um, and I am going to mix uh, blue green. I'm gonna move on to mistletoe. And my mistletoe is gonna be hanging upside down. So just like how we started the branch, I have like a little knob there. And then I'm just gonna have some um, little stems coming down. I think I might just do three. Um, and then they have some longer, they almost remind me of those helicopter um, leaves. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The mistletoe <laughs> branches. And so they kind of, have a weird almost like heavier bottomed banana shape to it <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what that shape is called it's like a funky oval um almost like a teardrop shape and so and if i have to add more i can um but that's just kind of how i'm going and maybe i'll add some layers later with like a darker blue or a yellow again these are all things you can kind of layer um, as you go, or I can even add a little bit of blue while it's still wet, kind of like doing mistletoe and bluesies. I feel like it's going to need more. That's not enough. It doesn't look full enough to me. It makes them come down further. Maybe I need to just paint over my words. <laughs> yeah, I think that's better. Make them long. You can make them overlap. My color got thin. <laughs> Might have to thicken it up. Or not. I don't love this, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's not my favorite one I've done. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but maybe it's just in my head. Maybe I just need to come back to it. Mistletoe's tough. <laughs> oh, Michael, I see what you're doing. It looks good. Excellent. I feel like I might need one more crossing over. I feel like I drew it weird. Maybe that's when I should have drawn with pencil first. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off really good. And I'm gonna go back to my, are your points that is dry? Can y'all give me a thumbs up? How are they doing? 
dry. Okay. So um, we'll go ahead and add another layer to that. I'm just going to mix up a, a thicker red. I'm going to add a tiny bit of orange in it. Or if your orange is like mine and not great, I might add a little yellow. It'll still make it orange. But I want it to be definitely a, a darker thick, uh, you know, a darker, less transparent red. And I just smudged my mistletoe. Maybe it made it look better um, than your other one. So I'm just trying to get a difference because we're going to kind of add in some um, floral petals behind this. And so it's kind of the same shape just when you get to your petals you've already drawn, you just kind of need to be careful. And I mean, you really could probably draw all over and actually make these the front petals. I, in my brain was just thinking they'd be behind, but I might kind of mix these up and do some over too. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> they could be small, especially since my space is full. So I'm kind of mixing it up. I'm doing some that kind of look like they're going behind. Maybe some that are even. Some that are a little bit bigger. Ooh, that one. I could always add another one after. It's even darker. Because <laughs> I am planning on doing kind of three layers of petals with this because they're pretty layered flowers just kind of filling that in start to starting to look a little bit like a pinwheel like those poinsettias do look like and what i might do to just kind of make all my um center look like it's still in the center is Add a little bit of an outline, not too dark, but just enough to kind of, I don't know what's happened here. I need more water on my paintbrush. All right. So it's coming along. It still needs some work, but we're, but we're getting somewhere with it. And then I think just for time, I wasn't sure how these, how long these techniques were um, last, but I would like to save the half hour to kind of join out or rethink getting started on that. So I think I'm going to do the branch and berries and then we're going to move on to laying out our, our thing after we finish our poinsettia. So the berry, the branch and the berries is um, just kind of to combine some of our techniques and maybe actually even do um, like a little bit of a different um, uh, leaf. So I'm going to give myself a little, little line that's kind of starts like the branch just a little bit thicker and then gets thinner. Um, and I'm going to have some leaves that are, are they're kind of similar to the, um, mistletoe. Um, but they're more of like an ovally shape. And the neat thing about this is you can kind of combine some of the techniques. You can leave like a little stripe in the middle. Um, you can use different colors. I'm using my blue green that I already had in a puddle. I can have some coming off, directly off of the branch. I'm coming, I'm kind of having them come in towards the, towards the original line. Just trying to keep them different sizes. Maybe that one will be a little thicker. So I've just kind of built up um, the leaves a little bit. So they're kind of coming off a little longer. And again, you know, you can do these in any, any color. 
you can go back and add some yellow into them while it's still wet or after. Um, And then while that's drying, I'm going to mix up another brown, brownish color. If I accidentally already washed mine away or tried, well, yeah, wiped it away. So I'm kind of just using the colors that are already on my palette. Red and green, a little bit of violet. Um, or you can just use a brown if you have it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get really tiny um tiny little wisps to come off of that branch that where i'm going to add berries whoops that was a little bit bigger that's okay um and you can you know you can have multiple berries coming off of one area or you know one here and there um but i'm just kind of having them randomly and we'll see how this looks <laughs> And so once that, I've drawn that out, is I'm gonna use my red and I already have red in my palette. And these beers are gonna be a little, you know, on the smaller side of things. Um, and so I'm just gonna, you know, very lightly kind of go in a circular motion with my paintbrush. If it leaves a little highlight showing, that's fine. I'm kind of ignoring where I've painted my leaves. Um, and you don't have to have a berry on each, you can have extra berries kind of random that aren't necessarily connected. You can have two berries to of one branch, um, but I'm just kind of painting them where I feel like it needs to. And look how pretty that is. Ooh, I like that. How's that so much better than the mistletoe? <laughs> so I wasn't expecting that. I feel like they're similar in style. Maybe my mistletoe needs some berries. <laughs> some random berries around here oh yeah there you go a little green and red that's for fun i feel like i need to do that to make myself feel better <laughs> um so there you go how's everyone doing with that so far i like it okay nice that's my favorite. I think that's going to be the base of my wreath. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, while that's drying, or if you're waiting for something to dry on your mistletoe or on your branch and berries, we can kind of come back to our poinsettia. And I'm going to mix even darker red, maybe touch a little bit of yellow in there again to kind of give it some more dimension but it's pretty pretty thick if you have two reds you know you can mix two reds together or i just have my little eight eight palette praying here praying palette going with it and we'll see how this turns out <laughs> um i'm just gonna go kind of in between and i might i might have to add a little bit of purple in there yeah just to kind of give and I might have to get the purple off and do more red. So it looks like it's going behind. Oh, wow. I might have to make it bigger. Kind of playing with things here. You can always go over the, the first leaves we did, too. I feel like this needs to come out wider. Those back ones, I feel like, need to be pretty wide to make sense. This was, this was my ambitious element here. <laughs> kind of like little mountains peeking through there. I might just paint, paint these red. I'm trying to think here. Again, if it starts to look like the same um, as your, you know, your first petals, you might need to add a little purple to it or orange. 
I got a little excited with the purple there. I have to pull some of that off. <laughs> or just go with it. I don't know why this one's like turning out round. I'm going to have to make it really thick. And... Kind of re touching. So I'm just kind of going in between all the, ooh, that was really red. Um, all the petals just to add that thick layer. I'm kind of doing all these behind it. What I might do is just come back to these later and add them if I need to. Add some details to the foreground ones. Yeah, so I've added all my background ones. And what I might do is just kind of go through and some of these four ground ones add some kind of details coming out from the center just to kind of make them pop. So I'm just kind of going around and I might even need to thin out my paints a little bit. And I'm just kind of pulling along the middle and then I can really get thin these other ones or even add a little bit of yellow I'm adding a little bit of yellow in these you can kind of just play with the textures it doesn't have to be oh but you can see how that's starting to really pop Kind of went through an ugly stage there. I was getting nervous that we're going to have another mistletoe experience. Um, you can just kind of add some little red dots in the center. So it's just adding some darker brush strokes into those foreground leaves to so just kind of help balance out the dark the darkest ones in the background kind of ended up coming together there at the end not as easy as roses <laughs> but then you have kind of a menu of techniques that we'll be able to use for our um making our wreath our wreaths and again, you know, you can combine techniques and stuff. So now I've brought this so close that I can't get it back to a normal distance. Okay. So are y'all ready? So we kind of have all of our menu of techniques here, just kind of adding the details and things like that. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to go back and add, but I, I think this is it. Um, so I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to get my little um, square piece here. Uh oh. Someone, someone asking something here. Oh, um, what size brushes am I using? Okay, so this is a size two, which is my tiniest one. And we actually have these for sale at Chestnut Creek, like in a pack of like five. And I just love these. They're called Royal Big Kids. <laughs> and this one's a size six. They come... And even a bigger size. I think this is a size 10. 
And then they also have like flat brushes. There's a 12, I think there's a 12. Or, there's an in between size, I think of a 10. Yeah, an eight, yep. So they're like by twos. So you can kind of see that there's not much difference. Sorry, here I'm trying. All right, okay. So let me get this up high while I'm kind of laying this out so you guys can see my whole um, area here, workspace. Okay, so um, first thing you need to do is with a pencil trace a circle, or if you are comfortable freehanding one, you're welcome to freehand one. I think these do look pretty neat if you can um, trace the circle just so it's perfect. And I cannot get this to stay up. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use a smaller bowl um, so I have room to kind of flare out. Um, again, like a cup will work. I'm just gonna try to center it as best as I can. And I'm gonna draw really lightly. And because this circle will probably, ugh, can't talk, probably not stay this way. And then I'm gonna kind of decide, um, you know, do I, how, how much do I want it to flare out? Um, I, if I want it to kind of come in and out, um, that's up to you. I think with, you know, you can even have some cur curls coming around. So I usually kind of do what I think are going to be my accents, um, like my main elements first. And it can kind of come in and out. I've had ones where I've just kind of gone straight out before. And you know, this is just to kind of help guide. I can have some short, I can ha have them going the other way. And really this is what this is gonna be. It's gonna be the center or kind of the center of these types of elements, you know, are these elements. Um, and it's just going to be kind of my guideline of, okay, well, that's where I want to do that. And then I can even go in and be like, okay, I know I'm going to want some berries here and berries here, maybe a berry here and here. You know, you can kind of just plot it out. That's can always change because this is just pencil. But I feel like just having some sort of starting point with pencil helps just getting started. And from there, you know, you can make it um, as full or as small as you want. I mean, there's some really kind of simple ones. Here, let me, like, here's ones I was just playing with, like, the other day. I mean, that's a roses one, Kathy. Um, you know, and this is when I just started. I haven't really done anything with it. Um, but it's just to kind of get started. I wish I had some more samples around me, but I don't. Sorry. Um, all right, let me, while y'all are kind of drawing yours out, I'm going to try to get mine set up a little better. And the cool thing about these is you can add like a fun saying inside, Winter Wonderland, or Jolly, or Holly Jolly, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And I love it because I kind of make one for each season and I switch them out in the same frame in my house. Um, so... It's just kind of simple seasonal artwork. All right, I think that's kind of good. So it's just simple. I don't have to draw all the details. I'm just trying to get a, a start. Um, you know, if you wanted to have like a section where it was holly and then it kind of spanned it out, you know, you could do that. Um, you know, make make a part of the, the wreath thick. Um, and then thin. So these are really fun, like I said. And you can even make these on cards. Actually, my Jolly sample that was for advertising for this class was a card. Um, so, all right. Um, so now I've got to decide a color palette. Do I want to do like bright yellows and greens? Do I want to do more bluesy tones? I mean, do I want to just do purples and blues? Um, you know, you can really kind of choose what type of palette you're doing. I'm digging this kind of color scheme with like the blue greens and then having some yellows in there, um, maybe with the holly. So um, I like that with the prank color palette and I'm gonna stick with that. Um, 
I have two cups of water, so I'm going to kind of start with my fresher cup, you know, get a new towel. But really, um, when you start, you just kind of pick somewhere. I tend to repeat elements. So I'm probably going to make these big swirly ones this, because this is really standing out to me. Um, and I'm going to probably paint all of those first, um, and then go back and add the berries, um, then probably do some pine and maybe some holly in the end. Um, if I need some larger elements. So that's kind of like my thought process with this. I'll kind of get started. Um, and you guys are welcome to kind of work along. If you have questions, just hold it up and ask. Um, just make sure you unmute yourself <laughs> so I can see. And I realize, let me look at people because I'm wondering if, I haven't heard from Pat. I'm wondering if she realizes she's muted. Well, she, Pat, if you are not sure how to unmute, you'll have to tell me next time. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to draw paint over my little pencil line. And then I'm going to start adding my. Um, longer leaves and the key to these is kind of sticking it out and just building it up start simple and then build it up add more until you're happy with it uh, i kind of sometimes i think oh i'm going to make this one like really full and lots of different elements and then like the first layer first round I do, I'm like, oh wait, I really like it just like it is <laughs> with like one, one set of leaves and multiple colors or something. So um, it's kind of fun. These are kind of ever evolving types of art projects. And so where this curves, I've got to figure out how I want it to curve. And I'm going really light in the beginning. You don't have to go this light. Whoops. But I, I like the softness of the, the winter blues. Well, that was probably a not a good choice right there, but. Mm. And you know, if you don't wanna break into the center of this, you don't have to. Um. So I'm just kind of adding, like I said, once you kind of get the hang of painting something, it's easier to just kind of repeat it all at once. You already got your color mixed up rather than have, you know, doing a little bit at a time. It's just a little more time efficient. And since it's a circle, you can always rotate it around however you want. <laughs> I think these are going to be other elements I'm going to do right here. So I'm just trying to, since it's a circle, I'm just trying to find a good balance. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical to be balanced. Asymmetrical. Do you guys have your yours kind of laid out, plotted out? Does anyone want to share? <laughs> this is probably a longer Zoom class. I'm normal. just watching. That's fine. Oops, look at that. I got red. Look at what I just did. <laughs> I don't know how I even did that. I'm gonna to try to wipe that off. So if you make a boo-boo like this, you can always wet a paper towel and try to wipe it off. Red is the worst, most unforgiving. 
And I always tend to do it with reds and purples, but I can also get a little white acrylic paint and cover that up if I need to. So it's key about having your hands clean. I don't even know where that red paint kind of came from. But all right. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of do the half and then I might add something down here. Um, I'm going to do some pretty even darker blue green pine needles. Cause I do think some people are just watching. I think some of the other people are like off on their own and that's fine with me. So this, I'm gonna kind of, I like the ones that kind of curved in. If you guys know me, you know, I'm a teal, teal person. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a little more blue, but that's okay. So the neat thing about these reeds are if you even mess up like a little spot or something like that, it's really forgiving because there's so many elements typically in these that you, they're not, it's hard to be distracted by a boo-boo. So I'm going to do kind of shorter. Oops, this one's all of a sudden going out and really I want it to go in. So I might change it up. <laughs> oh, I think I did. I don't know what I did with that one. Oh, there you go. That's really different. <laughs> and I feel like I need that one not to be there, but right here. Oops, look what I just did. Smear. Oops. Make sure you don't do that. Um, what I'm going to do with that is, since it's not too, too bad, I'm just going to let it dry. And I'm probably going to go over all of these with some darker blue and hope that you can't see that. Maybe I'll even, it actually kind of just looks like a different kind of pine needle. I might just go with it. Maybe even Amy, what did you do wrong? What did you not? Write? I just pushed my hand down in here and smeared it. Oh, okay. So you, I just smeared it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's um. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. I must have just accidentally bumped my thing. Um. So. Yeah. I mean, I. It's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Um. So now I can just kind of look at it and go, okay, do I want to add more of these or do I want to start maybe adding a poinsettia or holly berry, so, you know? So I think I'm going to start adding some red and seeing kind of how that looks with the picture. Cause I know I'm going to want to add some of those, that redness. So I'm just going to do my little berries here. Trying to stay in the lines, coloring from kindergarten, right? <laughs> I like that, Amy. It's starting to look pretty cool, huh? Um, and I mean, the thing about it is like at this point, you know, if I'm really feeling this, I can come back and add more of these into it and just kind of use that motif over and over again. And I think it would be pretty cool. You can even, I mean, I might even, I'm thinking about adding like some yellow green in there just to kind of brighten it up. I don't know. That's why I kind of like doing it a little bit at a time um, with certain, you know, certain elements and then going from there. You know, I can add little branches or something in there. But no, I agree, I like it. It's kind of a neat. I like these because it just, is, it's relaxing. You don't have to overthink it. You know, once you get the techniques and you just kind of start repeating things, it just, it can come together pretty quick. Um, I feel like I need one of these bad boys coming out somewhere else. So I'm going to have, I think I'm just going to follow this. This was my original little 
Ooh, that got bright. I, I must have used the wrong. Yeah, I was using the wrong color there. Oh, lovely, Amy. Just water it down a little bit. <laughs> what? I, need, I think I need a little yellow in that. What is happening? Cooler is not liking me right now. Oh well. Struggling trying to capture that same color. This is why you're supposed to do it all at the same time. I'm showing you what not to do here. <laughs> I'm going to do it, but I'm just kind of wanting to see how. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add, I think I need to add some holly now. I'm going to go with a yellow, more of a yellow green. That'll look pretty. I'm going to make it pretty light to start with, and I can always build it up. So I can draw it in or I can just start doing it kind of randomly. And I think I'm going to go out of these holly berries. Can do kind of small again, you know. If you want to be a little more planned than I am, I tend to do things on a whim. You know, you can draw it out first. I can picture doing these different um, uh, items and putting it in a vase, like it's a, an arrangement. Oh, yeah. Like cutting them out? Well, no, painting them like they're in oh, a vase. Oh, painting them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was thinking 3D. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you really could. Absolutely. Um, I am wondering about something else. <clears throat> what? How would you use the bare branches? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll add some of those in here. Let me get these hollies filled in real quick. Okay, thank and, you. Um, yeah, actually, I think I would like to add some bare branches into this. Um, so I'm going to mix myself up a little brown here real quick. I need a little more green. I don't know what I'm, oh, there we go. All right. Let me look at my little sheet here. Um, so I would probably... Do them just kind of coming out of here. Um, just to kind of add, you know, you it, in um, juxtaposition to the to the foliage, you know, the evergreens. It just could be a nice little touch of of. Um, other color, you know, you could do it in a navy blue. I'm thinking maybe do some over here. Just kind of another little technique. You know, you can do some smaller. Pieces too. Um, just like a little, little something different, you know, it's a little more line, line focused, a little less. 
I even feel like I've drawn myself a little bit into a corner. I need something maybe coming out here. Um, so that's how I would probably do that and make a little more. Um, Add a little more color to my holly while I'm thinking about if I want to do more branches or maybe put them in another color. My thought was I would do it kind of like a two toned. Holly. Although I outlined that one, so I might have to go back and do something different with that. <clears throat> so I might have to just be even darker. <laughs> it's all experimental art here. So I might even do like a really light kind of a shadow of a branch too in some of these because I feel like I do like these branches. So I can kind of do them um, almost behind and through. Depends on how thick you want it to. I kind of like these light. I like kind of having some really subtle colors on, on these wreaths for some reason. They're pretty. And then in the way of wording and stuff, as you kind of get happy, I don't I might have to erase that little blurb here. Um you know, once you kind of pick your wording, you can hand letter it. And what I what I typically do with that, if you're, you know, you're not used to hand lettering or you're not confident, is just Google uh, like the word you want, like hand lettered, Merry Christmas, and just try to kind of mimic that, practice it and do it in pencil first. And then you can, um, then you can paint over it or Sharpie over it or, however you want, whatever you want to do. And looking at this, I am thinking I want to do like a, some more lime green, kind of the, I think this will kind of add a, a little more greenery touch to it. Running out of space. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Just kind of make you can even make two. You know, don't be afraid to overlap ele elements. You can even go through and add a little bit of green to that. Honestly, I'm kind of painting this quick. I probably would put a little more care into it. I just want y'all to get to an idea of a finished product here. <laughs> so we're getting there. All right. So like I said, for a word, I'll just put, I'm just going to do jolly because that's kind of a quick one. And it'll fit.
So I would draw it in pencil first, and then I could, I'm gonna do it in red. Just get your nice color. And you wanna mix up enough that you can just kinda keep on going with it. <laughs> you don't have to stop and mix more up. Just using the stroke tip and you just kind of want to make sure you're not going against the brush grain when you are painting. You don't want to be pushing against anything. Whoop. You know, a little thickness, you can just soak it up with some water. I mean, soak it up with your paintbrush. All right. So we're getting there. <laughs> you can kind of see how quickly that came together. I mean, I did that in about half an hour, which I mean, I'm fast. Um, but it's a fun little way to, to do things, you know, now that I have the word, I can add maybe some other elements to it. So I know I'm not gonna, you know, compete with space there. So it's just a nice little, nice little, um, holiday painting oh michael i like what you're doing hold it up or is it taped down okay nice that's a good start i like it that's awesome does anyone else want to share has anyone been working while i'm working <laughs> oh awesome that looks great you painted that quick fantastic oh, that's pretty molly that is very pretty molly thank you well, if y'all want to share, you're welcome to email them to me. I hope you guys enjoyed the class. Um, next week, we're doing like little wooden ornaments. And we're going to have a kit to go with it if you want to join. Um, and it's going to be more mixed media. Uh, um, it's going to be not really watercolor technique. or It's not watercolor at all. So you'll just need some acrylic paints. And I think the kit's going to include an 8 by 10 for a paint party the following month. Um, I think we're still in the process of kind of, kind of stuff. what and any questions well thank you guys so much for joining us I hope you have a lovely evening I hope you come back and join us for another virtual class like I said this will be recorded I'll send you the link um, so you can you know if you want to go through and fast forward to a part maybe you wanted to rewatch um, that is that is great with me and if you missed last week's christmas card class and you want to watch it just and you you aren't on the list just email me and i can send it to you too okay all thank right you. thank you thank you it was fun. thank you guys thanks amy bye bye